Now let's look at ways that you calculate the moment of inertia. So our initial formula is actually useful. It's good for um, point masses or masses that you can treat as point masses on a light rod if we're working in one dimension. So for example, for some reason, say you happen to have a light rod like that, and you've got a mass m attached to it here, and then a mass half m attached to it here, and then a real big mass, 2m, attached here. So maybe one kilogram, half a kilogram, two kilograms, something, some ratios like that. And you could then say, what's the moment of inertia? You can't calculate it yet, because you don't know where the axis is. Right? The axis of rotation is here. All right. What's the moment of inertia? You can't calculate it yet, because that's not an axis. Right? You have to have uh, an axis of rotation, not just a point of rotation. So let's say the axis of rotation is uh, perpendicular to the board, and right there. Now you can calculate the moment of inertia. So let's see in this problem, let's say that this one is a distance uh, r now let's not use the letter R because it's in the formula. Let's say it's a distance um, D from there, and this one is a distance D from there, and this one is a distance D from there. Right, so they're uniformly spaced, or well, they're spaced D, D, D. So we want to use our formula. It was uh, that the moment is the sum over all I of each mass I, each distance from the axis squared. So let's just do them one at a time. So here's the axis coming out of the plane. <clears throat> so this one is m, mass m, times d squared. All right. This one is on the other side, but which side it's on doesn't matter because the position or the, the spacing is squared. So if it's negative, it's not going to matter. It's going to get squared. So this is plus 1 half m, and it's also d squared. All right. And then we now, we're doing the sum, i equals 3. Third one is plus 2m. And now we need its d squared, but notice it's actually at 2d. Right? The distance is the distance from the axis that matters. So 2d squared. So in this case, you would just combine those. I didn't do it ahead of time. It looks like it is a 1 and a half and plus 8. 9 and a half md squared. Uh, 9.5 md squared. So this is useful for point masses. Um, but for usually when you're dealing with moment of inertia, you're doing it for a continuous object. So for that, you need integrals. So I'm just going to give you the three formulas, and then we'll do examples of how to calculate them. So first, I. In general, you would say is the integral you sum up r squared dm. So instead of thinking about really doing the integral, you can just conceptualize taking the object and breaking it into dm's, and it's the distance of each differential mass, right? How far is each one from the, uh, from the axis? Distance, just like before. It's really no different. We've just written it as an integral. But in the real world, to do this calculation, you have to take your differential mass elements and describe them on some coordinate system and then integrate with respect to coordinates. So if it's a 3D object, it would be the integral, and you just take the row, the, volume, or the, the density, times r squared times dv. Right, because the density times the volume element is dm. Right, so this is what you do for a fully a 3D object. If you had like a flat sheet, you'd go with the uh, mass per unit area, r squared, and that would be times dA. That's for like a 2D sheet. Or if you had a 1D rod, you could say the integral, and usually we call it lambda, the mass per unit length, the linear mass density. Again, r squared, uh, in this case, dx, 1D. And in each one of these, what r means kind of varies. It's not necessarily the r of the coordinate system you're using. You just got to kind of set it up and see. So we're going to do examples. <clears throat> 